Hey friends, family, world, Luke here with another video. This week I'll be talking about Malta. Some fun facts about Malta include, Maltese is the only European language that is part of the Semitic language family, more closely related to languages like Arabic and Hebrew than it is to the nearby languages like Italian. It's also the only Semitic language written in the Latin alphabet. So when you're walking around and see things written in Maltese, it may look a little bit strange to you because it doesn't look like any other language. Malta at one point was a territory associated with the British Empire, and therefore you'll find some interesting aspects of British culture. One being that the Maltese people are largely pretty proficient at speaking English, that a lot of the cities have both Maltese names as well as English names, and also just random little gems of British infrastructure, including that they drive on the left side of the road, that you'll randomly see British telephone booths scattered around the country, and they use British plug outlets rather than the typical European ones. This was Tyler's and my first experience in Malta. In fact, it was Tyler's first time ever visiting a Mediterranean country, and we were very excited to see some sun. We went over Easter weekend, because here in the UK and Ireland, Easter weekend is a four-day weekend, and we wanted to make the most of our time there. We stayed at an Airbnb in Slima, which is a nice choice if you're looking for cheaper accommodation in Malta. That's also close enough to all the places that you'll want to visit, such as Valletta. The next day, we headed to an island called Camino. Malta consists of three islands, the main island of Malta, Gozo, and then a tiny little island called Camino. Camino is famous for the Blue Lagoon, and it is also a great spot for day hiking and gorgeous views. We took the bus to Chirkewa Ferry Terminal and enjoyed one of many delicious Maltese pastries that are all over the country. I may mention food and coffee more than once because it was that good. You get off the ferry and are very close to the famous Blue Lagoon. The turquoise waters are amazing and you can see why it's so famous and so popular. However, you may be surprised to know how small the beach is, and especially in summer, how crazy hectic I've heard it can be. Fortunately, because we weren't quite in the peak of high season, it wasn't quite as crazy as I've heard it can be, but we opted to take a walk around the island as our first to-do item on Camino. It was great just to walk along the sea cliffs and enjoy some time away from tourists. After our hike, we headed back closer to the port, and I decided that I wanted to take a dip inside these beautiful turquoise waters. Beware, in April, the water's pretty cold, but it was still a worthwhile experience, as I don't know the next time we'll be going on a Mediterranean holiday, and I wanted to make the most of it. After this, we took the ferry back to Chirkewa, and then took the bus to Valletta, which is the capital of Malta, and happens to be the smallest capital of any country in Europe. It's also got great history and architecture to explore and great food to experience. There are many patio restaurants to enjoy meals at and take in the nice Mediterranean sun. It was definitely a nice change of pace compared to what we've been used to in Ireland over the past couple months. The next day, we headed to another attraction called the Blue Grotto. In order to get there, we had to get a bus from Valletta, which we used as an opportunity to explore the city in the morning. A nice tip is that if you are a morning person like we are, Valletta is great to explore earlier before all the tourists come in because it has a totally different vibe to it. As I alluded to earlier as well, 
The coffee culture is great in Malta, and we enjoyed trying out a new cafe every morning in different parts of the cities that we were in. If you're a coffee person, you'll love it here. There's no direct bus route to the Blue Grotto, so we connected in a small town called Rendi, and then walked about a half hour or so through the Maltese countryside in order to get to the Blue Grotto. The water and the views at the Blue Grotto were pretty phenomenal, but unfortunately, the water was looking a bit rough, and so we didn't get the chance to take a boat into the Blue Grotto. However, even if you're in a situation like we are with this, we still think it's worth it just to get a more small town Malta feel than you get in Valletta, as well as to appreciate the beautiful ocean views that you're surrounded by in this area. Initially, we were gonna head back to Valletta after this, but on the bus, we decided to stop at one of the many ancient temples in Malta and explore some of the archeological history of the region. We stopped at this really interesting temple called Hagar Im and had such a great time walking around and exploring. Don't go to Malta and miss out on one of the many temples. This one was probably one of our favorite ones that we went to, but I also know that there were other major ones that we missed out on. Next, we headed to the city of Mdina, which is a fantastic fortified walled city and definitely a do not miss attraction in Malta. We arrived there just around lunchtime and had a great outdoor patio lunch experience. We were lucky that we got a table because this was Easter Sunday and most of the restaurants were booked and reserved for local Maltese people going out with their families. We spent the rest of the afternoon wandering around the beautiful streets of Mdina. We couldn't believe how well preserved all of these streets were in Malta. This is definitely a place you could enjoy just walking around and getting lost for a day. Late afternoon, we took a bus to a region called the Three Cities, which is an area on the other side of the harbor from Valletta. These cities are largely not visited by tourists, so are a great way to see some of the cool architecture of Malta without being surrounded by crowds. On Monday, we headed yet again to the ferry terminal in Chukewa, this time to take the ferry to the island of Gozo. Gozo is less developed than the island of Malta in terms of large cities and tourists, which in our eyes was a major benefit to visiting it. One downside to visiting Gozo though, is that the bus system is a little less developed and a bit harder to get around. And because of that, we decided to pay for a hop on hop off bus rather than relying on the public transit system. We found the island of Malta totally doable by public transit, but Gozo really probably is better served by car, especially because there's a lot of beautiful country roads to explore that it's nice to just kind of go any which way and not have a set itinerary. We arrived in the largest city and sometimes referred to as the capital of Gozo called Victoria. We arrived in Victoria around lunchtime and went to a restaurant called Cafe Jubilee where we had some delicious traditional Maltese food. When you're in Malta, please don't pass up the opportunity to try its delicious food as we found it was such a treat, particularly if you're someone who enjoys Mediterranean style food but it really is its own unique, distinct character. I think because of the combination of cultures of Sicilian influence, as well as Middle Eastern influence. We headed to a beautiful citadel that sits on top of the city and offers wonderful panoramic views of Victoria, as well as some of the surrounding countryside of the island.
After this, we headed to another set of megalithic temples, this time called the Gigantia Temples. We also walked around the town of Shacha before heading back on the bus. The rest of the day, we enjoyed just kind of riding around on the hop on hop off bus where we had a great experience on the top deck of the bus. Early Tuesday morning, we did a lovely morning walk along coastal walkways of Slima. We headed to the neighboring town of St. Thomas and had a wonderful breakfast right on the water. That is it for our long weekend in Malta. Such a wonderful experience, often in an overlooked country, especially for people who don't live in Europe, and really an experience that we treasured and look forward to visiting again at some point in the future. I hope you found this video useful in terms of planning your potential future trip to Malta. If you're interested to learn more about some of the history that we learned in Malta, check out our blog at lukeandtyler.com, where we'll include some more information about what we've learned about the region. If you haven't already, be sure to check our other videos for other places that we've visited in Europe thus far. Be sure to check out our next video for our weekend exploring the Cliffs of Moher as well as Burren National Park. See you then, bye!